Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 17 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where today I'm getting into a little bit of astral shenanigans. At least, that's the plan. That is the plan. Um, so last episode I mentioned that we're going to get into attunement today, uh, so I kind of prepared between episodes all the stuff that I would need to get that going. Um, so as you can see here, the Astral Attunement Altar is a pretty large multi-block structure. You need 225 sooty marble for the base of it. Uh, and then you need like a decent amount of, um, you know, ruined marble and attuned altar itself. We need some marble pillars. We need some chiseled marble. So a handful of things, but nothing too terrible. Um, so over in the corner here, I'm going to use, I think, sooty marble in, the, in these corners. You can, you can do anything you want. Uh, because in the, in the picture here, it's, it's blank, but yeah, I'll probably just do this. That should be fine. And then surrounding all that is going to be, uh, the, the marble arches. So we need marble arch. That would be, I know I made some, there you go. Something like that. Nice. And once we unlock astral attunement, that's when that's when a lot of astral starts to open up. That's when you start getting your perks that I'll talk about in a minute here. That's when you really start being able to do a lot of crazy stuff. So pretty excited to be unlocking astral attunement today. Um, very interested to see. I think the perk tree has changed quite a bit. So I'm curious to see how that looks. Now I should have brought exactly enough of this stuff and I believe that I did, so yay. Uh, and then runed followed by pillars with chiseled on top. That looks about right. And three pillars, by the way. So like that. And that should be cool. And I am happy to report that uh, you all did a good job and helped out the dyer just a little bit. Um, I was looking for a way, and I was not aware of a way, to pass the day and make it nighttime. However, however, I did learn through the YouTube comments that there is a way, so thank you guys for that. Uh, several people mentioned that you can make the hammock from the Comforts mod, and that will allow you to sleep the day away into night, which is pretty cool looking. Uh, we just need a piece of wool and a couple sticks and a whole bunch of string. So that, and let's just do four more wool. And I think I've got sticks on me. There we go, that, 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 and that. And now we can make ourselves a hammock. Let's, uh, let's see how this thing gets placed. I don't know if it's a two block thingy or what. I guess, uh, I don't know where I wanna put you to be honest with you. How about over here? Okay, I don't know how to place hammocks. And you can notice I uh, got assaulted by another raid, unfortunately, so that was fun. Okay, well, hammocks are a thing. White hammock cloth. Do I actually have to use them to make the hammock? There's white hammock cloth, but then how does one make an actual hammock? So it's from the comforts mod, which is the same place we got sleeping bags, right? Uh, rope and nail, that that could be a thing. I feel like that might be part of the hammock, right? Now, maybe we need two of these? Seems sensical to have two rope and nail. I guess I get two per craft, so well, a little wasteful, but life goes on. So let's experiment a little bit with how this works. I'm assuming that I'm going to need two. I could just like look this up, of course, but that would be far too easy. You know what, maybe there needs to be one block in between them. That would make sense, right? I need to stop making such a mess in my base. Dirt, please. Thank you. 
So if there's one block between them, it would be something like this, and then the hammock cloth in between. All right, I am totally lost. Ah, so the blocks need to be four spaces apart. And this is probably not where this thing's going to live. Oh, hello, four spaces apart. Neat, okay. You can only sleep during the day. I agree. Is it not day enough? I guess it's not day enough. But there you go. <laughs> I was really close. <laughs> I was really close. But you needed two block spaces in between the ropes. Oh well. Oh well. Life goes on. We mostly accomplished our goal. Uh, so let me go get my actual wand because it's nighttime anyway coming up. Uh, I don't need a lot of this stuff left, but I do need... I do need four of these. And this will make my attunement altar. And I definitely need my resonating wand. Good, we've got that. So I think we're ready to make the attunement altar. And I don't think I need you no more. I should clear out that bad omen before I accidentally walk into a village with it. Hooray! All right, so that would be... Oh, that's right, I need an astral relay. I forgot about you. I forgot about you. Uh, that's going to need some glass panes. And what else is it? Just gold or gold nuggets? Gold. And a piece of marble. And that's it. Gold nuggets. Da -da. Yep. That should be cool. I do need to come up with like a nice way to, to zip around here. Okay, so you, Astral Tomb and Altar, are going to need one of the you. Go. Go. And then Astral Attunement, dude. Needs more starlight. Dun, 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 dun. So we'll see if we're going to get enough. I'm thinking we might get enough right at midnight. I'm thinking we might, and if we don't, we'll have to get some of those uh, some of those things that can that can beam some extra altar energy down here. I guess because it's nighttime. Ooh, there's a there's a there's a new constellation that I can look up. Hang on, I need to I need to to do that. I think that's Decidia, and I think that's the one that I haven't found thus far uh, of the majors, at least. So let's see, you to here. Might as well do this while we're waiting for nighttime to be fully midnight, right? To there. And then a triangle here-ish. And hey, there you go, Decidia. Nice. Well, that's pretty cool. All right. Hey, look, we're good. Didn't have to be fully midnight. I like how you, uh, as you craft more and more advanced stuff with the Starlight Crafting Altar, there's more and more particle effects going on, right? It's no longer just the table. It's like the whole altar turns into just a bunch of, bunch of lights so cool all right let's see if i can if i can wing this thing's center point oh yeah i did totally winged it totally winged it so you know you've done this correctly when you get all these glowing spots here um that indicates that the multi-block is properly formed now the other thing i want to do is make sure to claim these chunks with ftb chunks so let's go to the, the chunk claimer i'm going to make sure that this whole area is claimed for me because I'm pretty sure that means hello Darewol 20s team what's with the lack of coloring though that's interesting is my team color like not allies waypoint currently disabled due to a bug overworld settings oh my chunk grid oh, okay cool anyway it won't prevent mob spawns but it will prevent creeper explosions from destroying blocks I think I think Let's test that out. Hello, sir. Please blow up. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Look at that. All right. So now that we've got that up and running, we're going to need just a few more of those doohickeys that we just made. So I'm going to get a handful more marble. We're going to need like six-ish. Let's get seven. No, let's get eight. Let's get eight of them. That might be cool. Um... 
We're gonna need those those relay things. And then we're gonna have to decide how we want to attune ourselves. To which constellation do we want to be attuned? That's a really good question that I don't know the answer to because I don't know how or what has changed since 116 uh, Astral. So we're gonna need to figure that out. Let's just get a bunch of this stuff. Cool. Um, and then these dudes. What am I short on? Oh, I didn't have enough marble. That's fine. Actually, I do have enough marble. Aha. I'm low on marble, obviously, because I just made a bunch, but... There you go, two more. So let's look at the constellations, right? Because we are now ready to attune ourselves, right? Personal attunement. Um, let's see. Light crystals attuning the starlight energies resides within the body, allows application of those energies to rec directly enhance oneself. While any magical ability can be accessed by properly focusing the starlight to that purpose, the initial attunement performed will change how much effort it takes to get to that goal, as well as the actions that must be taken to exercise the attuned energies. A person may only be attuned to bright constellation. Controlling how these inner magical energies are channeled requires meditation beyond the ability of most sorcerers, regardless of skill. To assist in this, the Academy has included within the tome a page of meditation tools that aid the meditation, the media meditant in visualizing the shape and allocation of these spare energy points. These tools can be located under the perks tab, which we will unlock once we've attuned ourselves. Focusing these points of magical energy in different ways will result in different effects. Unfortunately, due to the resulting patterns being etched into a person's magical form, there's no easy method to recover allocated points individually, though there are methods to temporarily seal a specific point's magic. Um, to clear allocated points, the energies must be disrupted by directly impacting their attuned root. Clearing an attunement from the body will necess necessitate reattuning it to the med to start meditative assignment all over again. Um, there are three magnitudes of bonuses. Yeah. So basically speaking, the way this worked in previous versions of Minecraft, and I'm thinking it still works now, is you can progress through the perk tree that's going to be unlocked by attuning yourself however you wish. But where you start in the perk tree and how you gain perk levels is determined by which constellation you attune yourself to. So, for example, this thing um, harms enemies, right? So I'm pretty sure fighting enemies, if we attuned ourselves to Dissidia, is how we would level up, right? Avidus um, causes plants to grow. So I'm not sure how you gain perk points from that. I forget. Um, Vicio might be from, like, running around? I think? Or maybe mining? One of them's mining. Armor is from taking damage, Armara. I know that one. That's, that's taking damage does that. And this one breaks blocks, so I think mining... Let's do a Vorcio. Does that sound like a plan? I like that idea. Let's attune ourselves to a Vorcio. Because we break a lot of blocks, right? So what I'm going to do to show you guys how this works is we want to get a Vorcio. We want to hold it in our offhand. And then we want to get those astral relays that we found. And with a Vorcio held in our offhand, you will see a lit up area on this dude showing you where to place these astral relays. And once you've placed them all and a Vorcio is in the sky, which it is, so that should be pretty cool. Did I miss one? I don't think so. Everybody's placed correctly here. It looks good. So that's all cool. I feel like I missed one. Did I miss one? Or did I misplace one somehow? I mean, Avorcio is definitely in the sky. It might be getting too daytime-ish. If that's the case, then we'll just have to wait till tomorrow, which now because of my fancy hammock, I can probably do. But talk to me about why this isn't forming. Is there something I missed? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think that's right. That all looks good to me. All right, let's pop home. What we'll do is we will sleep through said day. I just don't want to wait. I just don't want to wait. 
You can only sleep during the day. I agree. Uh, see? Day. Look, it's blue, Mr. Hammock. Come on. I'm going to wait a minute and see how long it takes to get this to let me sleep. Hey, there we go. Not long. I did not have to wait that long. And I guess it makes it, you know, evening-ish. Cool. Now, hopefully the city is still in the sky uh, on this night. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. So what I'll do is... We'll put this back in our offhand. And you won't be able to see the sparkles too clearly during the day like most astral things. You do have to wait until the actual uh, nighttime. So let me just wait a little bit and then uh, we'll see what happens. I'll be back in a few minutes. Yeah, you know what I think it was? Is Aborcio wasn't in the sky last night. I was looking at that one, which is Dissidia. Yeah, I we did not have Aborcio in the sky. That's why, that's why I believe it wasn't working. So we'll have to wait for Aborcio to show up. It may or may not come out tonight. I might have to sleep through the night and then sleep through the day and eventually get it. All right, guys. So I'm seeing what I think is Aborcio up in the sky, which means that our attunement altar should be ready to attune our player and look it is so this this is how you know the attunement altar is up and running um the, the beams and the lasers and all the good stuff uh that means we're ready to attune so i'm going to step into the altar here uh and we can see attunement happen that's cool i'm going to go on a limb and assume that the red particle effects are because i chose a force seal. Man, it is very much attuning me. Look at the look at the look at the particles dancing around my player. That's cool. I can see the light! Hooray! That is cool. Look at that man. How amazing was that? I think I think Astral has one upped itself <laughs> as it relates to uh to the particle effects that it had in the past. Like, that was just awesome. All right, let's peek inside for a minute because now um, we should have access to further constellations, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put away this one. Also, I have a perk point, as you can see on the left there. We'll talk about perks in a minute. But first thing, by unlocking, uh, by attuning myself, we now unlock the ability to discover minor constellations. So as you pick up new uh, constellation papers now, you will find minor constellations available to you, like Octans and Fornax and Pelotrio and Horologium, and among other things. Cool? Secondly, you now have unlocked Perks, which is this gigantic perk tree. Yeah, the perk tree is different. I can already tell the perk tree is different, which is very cool. That is very cool. Alright, so up here we've got um, Evorcio, Plus one added to reach, gain experience by breaking blocks. This is a root node. Uh, so whatever constellation you attune yourself to is where you start in this giant perk structure. Okay. Um, there's other root nodes like Dissidia. More melee damage and projectile damage. Gain experience by dealing damage. Uh, Armara. Gain experience by taking damage and you get 20% more armor. Vicio Increases movement speed. Get experience by moving around. I mean, that one also sounds interesting. Um, and Abetus, plus two added to maximum life. Gain experience by placing blocks. Gotcha. Okay. I was curious what the experience gain from that was. But that's similar to how it was in 112, I think. And then what you can do is you can spend perk points um, by this. So increase melee damage, increase mining speed. I think I'm going to go with melee damage, right? So I just click on that and then... Oh. Sound effect. That's cool. Uh, and then more melee damage, and then empty gem slocket. 5% increased melee damage, 5% increased attack speed. Oh, I like that. That sounds cool. Uh, plus one added maximum life. Um, increased cooldown recovery, increased effectiveness of perks. So there's a bunch of perks to get here. A pickaxe can be used instead of a shovel or an axe. I like it. I like it. I definitely like it. Bloom increases maximum starlight charge. Well, that's neat. 
plus one added mining size. Illusionary hammer, plus one added mining size. That's interesting. I'd be curious how that works. Because you don't always want to do a 3x3 three three miner. So I'd be curious to see how that works. Um, increased reach, increased mining speeds. Um, so you can work towards these things, but I think you have to unlock the ability to see what the, what's in those just yet. A more added mining size. More damage and mining speed, the more health you are missing. Well, that's cool. Um, Epiphany. Epiphany Veracity. So there's like, there's a ton of stuff. Chain Lightning. Lightning Arc Bolts Chain two additional times. Hitting mobs has a chance to spawn Chain Lightning Bolts between the hit and nearby monsters. That's cool. I like that. Uh, mobs bleed after damage. Uh, let's see. There's there's a ton of perks here, obviously. I mean, I could sit here for an hour looking at all these perks and see what they do. Um, which just sounds like craziness. And how's the center of the tree look? There's gem sockets down here. Um, that's cool. Plus one added luck. Interesting. Plus one level of smite. Plus two levels of sweeping edge. Plus two levels on them breaking. That's neat. Oh, it's all kinds of interesting stuff. A chance have a attacks have a chance of disarming the target. Occasionally your armor repairs itself. Sweet. There's so much stuff to look at here. I can't even I can't even decide. But I think what's gonna happen is as we progress through the mod, we will be able to see more and more uh, of what's unlockable. And we'll also be able to, at some point, I'm pretty sure, reset all our perk points. Let's go mine real quick and just see what that experience is like. So I'm going to go bring my, my quantum bag, which will pick up a bunch of junk from mining. So we're going to pop down here. I'm just going to head into my mining caves. Yeah, I could go mine in the mining dimension, but I'm less interested in getting ores, and I'm more interested in uh, getting perk experience. So it doesn't really matter what blocks I break, right? Uh, so let's see. We're going to go over here-ish. Yeah, this looks good. So if I hold my book, it shows me the experience I get. So see that? I already got a, I already got a level. And I got another level. <laughs> I knew, I knew with the 7x7 seven seven miner, I knew this would be the right call. Right? I knew it. I knew this would be the way to go. Now, obviously, um, there's diminishing returns on that. I mean, not really diminishing returns, but just like normal experience in Minecraft and most other games where experience is a thing, it takes more and more levels, or it takes more and more effort to level up, right? So we're now only at, we're not at level 30 because I broke 30 sets of blocks, right? So when I break a good 7x7 seven seven here, um, I mean, hit the level 10, that's cool. So I mean, like, we're getting like half a level per block break now rather than a full one, maybe even a third of a level, and it's going to continue to slow down, right? Pretty cool though, right? That's pretty cool. We can now we can now throw a bunch of perk points at this thing, I think. I think that sounds like a plan. I told you I told you the mining one was the way to go, right? Very pleased with that. Hey, 13 levels, let's go 14. Let's let's round it up to 15. Why not? Almost there. See, now it's definitely a lot slower. Now it's definitely a lot slower than before. Like, you have to mine, I don't know, like 10 or 12 sets of blocks per level. Which is not slow, by the way. Like, it's slower, but it's not slow by any stretch of the imagination. Alright, so I've got a lot of junk that I probably have to clean up now inventory-wise. Not terrible. Not terrible. So I didn't want to do that, actually. That's the wrong input chest. I should really focus more on tech at some point sooner than later, to be honest with you. It's on my to-do list to get back into tech. Nice. Okay. A little bit of food. 
So let's check out what perk points we can spend now, because we got like 15 of them. So I'm not worried about my mining speed, so I'm not going to focus on that too much. I think I'm going to hit melee damage, right? And then we get a gem socket or increase melee damage and attack speed. Which sounds cool. I don't know like where I want to head, to be completely honest with you. Increased armor plus one added maximum life. Well, that sounds pretty good. And you can see my perk points that are available up on the top here. And you can also search for points as well. And the statistics will tell you about all the benefits you're getting as a result of the perks that you've applied. So right now, I'm getting plus 8% cooldown recovery. Um, effectiveness of perks is a little bit higher. Maximum life is 21, so plus 1 maximum life, like it said. A little bit extra melee damage, a little extra reach. So that's pretty cool. See my hearts? Oh, that's interesting. It puts a heart above my hearts. It's not, it's not your traditional, like, gold overlaid heart thing like we've seen in the past. Interesting. So, gem sockets, increased movement speeds. I gotta look into gem sockets. I'm pretty sure that's covered in the books. And I don't think I did much with that in the 112 version. But I think that would be this. Alright, so the gist is dynamism gems can be made by throwing a rock crystal into a bucket of liquid starlight with illumination powder, which will result in, um, as it says there, uh, a reaction with the crystal, eventually evaporating both the liquid starlight and the illumination powder. Have we made illumination powder yet? I don't think so. But I want to try this out. Uh, so it's just glowstone and aquamarine. So that's actually pretty easy. Let's get three sets of it. And how am I for aquamarines? I think I still have a lot. Yeah, we still have plenty. Cool. I might be able to make these during the day. I should probably make it nighttime. Let's sleep into the night. Hooray! Being able to sleep to the night. Well, I should probably make my uh, I should probably make my thingy a one by one again. Um, so what this does is it creates gems that have random attributes, and then you can put them in the gem slots that you unlock in the perk tree. Um, and as you and you can easily swap them in and out, which is like the most important part. Uh, so that's pretty neat. All right, so let's get enough starlight here to produce a little bit of illumination powder. And we get 16 per craft, so, like, let's not worry about too much. I mean, that's pretty cheap, and you get a lot of it all at once. That's not bad at all. So a little bit more. Come on. There we go. Nice. So we drop this into a, uh, with, with a, with a rock crystal into a pool of starlight. And that should be what we're looking for. So let's put this right here, I think. We'll grab any rock crystal. I don't think it matters which one. You. And you. And I need to put this bag away and I need to turn off my magnet. Or you know what I need to do? I'll tell you what I need to do. Isn't there like a UI for the magnet? I thought the magnet had like a blacklist. Doesn't it? Doesn't it, doesn't it have a blacklist if you shift right click it? Maybe that's not implemented yet. Anyway, you two go in there. And then look, we got, we got particle effects indicating good things happening. That's pretty cool. And then what should happen is in a few moments, the rock crystal and the illumination powder will fuse together and create a crystal that's going to be grown. We have to wait for it to grow. And also, it's noted in the book, we're going to keep this over here so we can keep an eye on it. Um, once it has slowly grown through several stages into a large shimmering cluster, it can be harvested. The resulting gem is reactive to local starlight energies, strengthening the flow of magical uh, energy in their wielder's body. So look, there it is. Gem crystal cluster. That, if you look at it with F3, you'll see... Uh, it's stage zero. I assume we want to get to somewhere around stage three or four. Oh, look, it's already stage one. Nice. Well, that was quick. I like that. It already grew a little bit. Beautiful. Um, the time the cluster grows can impact the type of crystal that forms. Day, night, or dawn and dusk. The time of growth will change the type of gem created. Ilium gems grown during the day tend to have weaker yet more numerous enchants. Orium and Fengarum gems grown at darker hours tend to have more potency in their aspects. Once fully grown, these clusters can sometimes revert back to their immature form. So let's keep an eye on that. Does that 
that's stage one still. Okay, cool. Now, alas, I have no tick accelerator, really. Um, but I think, number one, it's important that it can see the sky, which it totally can from here. Uh, if we had a collector crystal, we might want to, you know, focus that on this, and it might might speed it up. I'm not quite sure. Hey, look, it's already stage two. Nice. And you can see that it's a night gem. So stage two night. Uh, I'm not sure at what point, I'm assuming stage three is when we're going to want to do this thing. I'm assuming stage three is the harvest time. So let's keep an eye on it for another few minutes. I'll come back when it's stage three. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, this thing has not moved beyond stage two for a while, so I'm gonna break him. Oh, I guess stage two is where you wanna be. Okay, that's cool. Look at that, 7% increased attack speed. All right, those are some neat attributes right there. Fengarum Dynamism Gem, all right. Neat. That's kind of cool, I like that. And then we can slot that in. So let's unlock a Dynamism Gem location, right? So that would be this one, Empty Gem Socket. Right click to choose a gem from your inventory. Oh, cool. Look at that. That is cool. Right click to remove it. Right click to add it. All right. Nice. So that's pretty awesome. Let's see what other perk points we can snag here. Uh, I don't want that. I don't think I really need that so much. Plus one added to mining size. I'm not sure how that works. Um, five for increased mining speed and reach. Movement speed. Well, I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, mining speed is mostly, th these two are movement speeds, but they're small. A little bit of armor bump, armor bump, perk effectiveness, perk experience gain. That's kind of cool. Um, other epiphany nodes can be unlocked without requiring a connection to the existing perks. I don't know what epiphanies do, though. I don't quite know what epiphanies do. So let me just grab, what's over here? Effectiveness, effectiveness, more damage and mining speed based on low health. Let's do some armor ones. Effectiveness of perks. Ooh, increased attack speeds, don't mind if I do. Effectiveness of perks, effectiveness of perks. I'm not sure if I have to unlock all of these before I can get this one. I feel like that's what it's telling me, though. Aha! But he's still locked. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's wrap up the episode here, and we'll come back next time and play some more of this. I also kind of want to get back into tech for a little bit. We've been doing a lot of magic lately, and I need to ramp up my RF production and some automation. So for now, Doll27 off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.